There's a whole movement. It used to be called, whenever I was a kid, the hyper grace movement, right? That you just could do whatever you want, but that's kind of gone out of style. And so they've reinvented itself with the new term deconstruction. It's the same lie with better marketing. They've come up with hashtags and, 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 and social media pushes. People say, well, you can't really talk about deconstruction because there's, there's not a leader. My friends, I know there's not a leader. You know why there's not an earthly leader? Because there's a demonic leader behind it, causing confusion and chaos within the hearts of people and within the church. And here's what they would say. It's about deconstructing the Bible to where eventually you get rid of all the things in the church and doctrine in the Bible that you don't agree with. All this stuff about homosexuality and abortion and, 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 and transgenderism and, and war and self-defense, all this stuff about other religions and Jesus being the only way. Oh, that's just so outdated and antiquated. It just doesn't match what culture is. And so instead of agreeing with scripture, you try to change scripture so that way it agrees with culture and you end up with a book and a Bible and a faith that is foreign to what the word of God actually actually teaches. And what they'll say is the only sinful desire is to restrain yourself from pursuing those sinful desires. Instead of becoming like the, instead of escaping from the world, they will encourage you to become even more like the world. This is one of the biggest lies that is happening because they celebrate what God says to hate. They tolerate what God says we are to repent of and they reject the work of the divine power of God that is working in their lives. And if you go down the road of deconstruction so far of resisting the divine power working within you, you will be guilty of Mark chapter three, verse 18, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is the unforgivable sin. Listen, let me make this super clear for people is that there is no such thing as a gay affirming church. There is no such thing as a trans affirming church. There is no such thing as gay Christians. There is no such thing as transgendered Christians. There is no such thing as a deconstructed Christian, maybe a deconverted Christian masquerading, but there is no deconstructed Christian. There is no such thing as a pro-choice Christian. There is no such thing as a progressive Christian. There is no such thing as a woke Christian or a woke church. You are either pursuing holiness or you are guilty of heresy. You are either working with the Holy Spirit or you are actively working against the Holy Spirit. Either he works in you or you are working against him. Now, that's not to say that there aren't Christians who struggle with same-sex attraction. There are. But they're not out in the streets waving flags around. No, they're in the altars, and they're in small groups confessing and being strengthened. It's not to say that there aren't Christians that have, trans, uh, have gender dysphoria, but instead of transitioning, they were praying that they would be transformed into the image of God, not into this image of the world, by the renewing of their minds and instead of going under the knife and castrating their genitals, they submit to the Holy Spirit who circumcises their hearts. It's not to say that there are women in our church who have, in a moment of fear and panic, did the unthinkable and they had an abortion, but they're not out rioting and protesting and using hashtags to be able to support of it. No, what they're doing is they're getting healing and they're walking through that and they will have a wonderful family reunion at home with that child, but they're not advocating for the murder of babies within our nation. You cannot tolerate that which God hates. And you cannot celebrate that which God tells us to repent of. And there's some people in the room at this point, I could just sense it, that you want to begin to argue and you say, oh yeah, well, I was born this way. Maybe, but you need to be born again. Yes. You say, but you know, God just wants me to be happy. Where'd you find that at? Second nowhere, 316? <laughs> it's not in here. It's not about your happiness, it's about your holiness. And the Holy Spirit has given you everything you need to live a life of godliness. And if you ain't living a godly life, it's because you ain't got the Holy Ghost. I'm just trying to tell you, I'm making it simple. You say, Pastor, I just don't know, I don't know. Listen, clarity is kindness, and I'm trying to be as kind as I can to make it as clear as I can. You've been deceived. You've been deceived. You say, but I can't change who I am. You know what? You're right. You can't change who you are, but the Holy Spirit can. Amen. You can't change who you are, but he can. He can change you from the inside out. He can renew your mind. He can give you strength. He can help you overcome sin and temptation. He can help you to live a brand new life. Listen, if you're here and you're like, I'm a Christian and I just can't change. You know what you are? You're an idolater. 
Do you know why? Because you think you're more powerful than God himself. 